Eleanor Rickby was somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the Thar Desert in the western Indian state of Rajasthan, so the story goes. A peculiar place for a little blue rickshaw from Chennai, a city deep in the far southeast of India. To make sense of the situation, I suppose we better start at the beginning. Now, the details of the story are popular topics of debate among locals, however, most will agree that it all started in a small, charming city in Punjab, in the north of India, and it is here that we'll start with little Eleanor just arrived and waiting in the early morning darkness in the tiny, quaint, albeit crowded, narrow streets of Amritsar. Now why was Eleanor Rickby waiting on a deserted street in the middle of Amritsar, you might ask? Well, Eleanor had been adopted by two Canadian parents, Marin and Grace, who were planning to attempt driving Eleanor all around India. They had requested that their new rickshaw be shipped up to Amritsar, the starting point for their ambitious journey. Now, a rickshaw is a three-wheeled contraption riding on about seven horsepower. Weak brakes of which Eleanor only had one back brake to begin with, and no seat belts, though getting this particular vehicle over 50 kilometers an hour is asking quite a lot. Basically, this is a toaster with an engine strapped inside of it. For anyone with a logical brain inside of their heads, a rickshaw is a vehicle not at all suitable for such a journey as this. And so, for Marin and Grace, that meant it was perfect. Eleanor Rickby had never met a Canadian before, at least that we're aware of. So she sat with bated anticipation to meet her new parents. Actually, it looks like they're just arriving now. Eleanor, Marin, and Grace loaded up to begin their journey south. They decided to make a quick stop at the Wagga border on the way, and their first drive together was chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> 
Their first night on the border of Haryana and Punjab went fairly well, except for somebody who had a particularly violent case of deli belly. But the team carried on the following morning along an old dusty hall road. Eleanor Rickby was heading on a route down the west side of India, and the first major stop along the way was Bikaner in Rajasthan, famous for its old railway that was built to connect to Calcutta. They had stopped in Beaconer so that Marin and Grace could pay their respects to the rats at Carney Mata. After gaining some good karma from feeding the rats, it was time for Grace to get her first lesson driving Eleanor. This involved finding a quiet road in a small community and ripping laps around the block. And with an entire 37 minutes of rickshaw driving experience, Grace took the wheel and pulled onto the highway and into Indian traffic.
Eleanor Rickby, Grace, and Marin now found themselves on the edge of the Thar Desert in Rajasthan. A quiet place where one simply feels lost in time with nothing but the sound of asphalt under the tires and the thoughts in your head echoing in the silence. After riding one of the most desolate and enjoyable roads of the journey so far, Eleanor pulled into the fortress city of Jaisalmer. The desert is a hot place, and Eleanor decided to take a short break while Marin and Grace went exploring using different modes of transportation. Eleanor Rickby pulled back onto the road heading towards Jodhpur. She had covered much distance to already be heading back through the desert to Jaisalmer. But the planned journey down to the south of India was a big one for a little rickshaw. The roads are bumpy and full of hazards and the distance is long. Ellie had been running strong so far and yet to experience any breakdowns. Yet. So, the gang marched onwards with Mumbai, the halfway point of the journey south, still a glimmer in the distance. They made a quick stop over in the city of Jodhpur to have dinner with the family of one of Marin's Indian friends he'd met in Sri Lanka. They gifted a Ganesh, the god of obstacles. And with Ganesh safely installed in Eleanor, they went for a short drive around the block before heading back out on the road. Today, the gang was tired, so they decided they would just get to a diaper, check in, and get some rest. But, you'll come to find that one doesn't simply sneak quietly into a city in India, no, Eleanor instead drove unexpectedly right into the middle of Hindu New Year's. Today, Eleanor Rickby was sick. 
so Grace and Marin took her for a treat to cheer her up. Eleanor Rickby arrived in Mumbai, and it was peaceful. Granted, it was 7 a.m. on a Sunday. For the first time of the journey, it seemed possible that a little rickshaw would be able to make it all the way to the south of India. Fueled with having made it already to the halfway point of their journey, they continued onwards into a brand new landscape, ready to take on the jungles of the south. the distance was down to half, the road would bend and wind through the hills and jungle. With so much still left to see in the south, Eleanor took off.
One of the most unexpected parts of the journey for Eleanor Rickby was the coffee paradise of Chick Mangler. Foolish ideas tend to attract company, and driving a rickshaw through India is no exception. The gang was in Bangalore to pick up Marin's sister Jazz, who had just flown across from Canada to join them for two weeks. And as Jazz quickly learned, when you join a trip that's already underway, there's no time to ease into it as her first experience was driving backwards down a one-way road and getting a flat tire in the first few hours. Next up was Jazz's customary driving lesson with Eleanor. She drove the gang to a temple at the top of a hill in Mysore. The next stop for the gang was a tiger safari in Nagarholi. After failing to see a tiger on the first two attempts, they decided to gamble their dinner money for the last night for a third attempt at finding a tiger. This was much to the delight of one of the girls, and not so much the other one. The landscapes seemed to just fly by as they drove through jungle after jungle.
Camel Nadu, Eleanor had her biggest test of the journey so far. Conquering the hill on the way to Kodai Canal would prove to be a difficult challenge, but she had lots of support along the way. Locals cheering her on every inch of the way, Eleanor eventually conquered the mountain and rolled into the paradise town of Kodai Canal. It's hard to describe a place like this. Eleanor Rickby didn't even feel like she was in the same country that she started in. It's hard to believe that all this green space is still the same country as the desert that she'd come from. Arriving in Kochi, the final place that Jazz would be with Marin and Grace, they went around exploring and just trying to enjoy a little bit of a holiday before Jazz had to leave. After Jazz left, Eleanor Rickby, Marin and Grace slowly made their way down towards the southernmost point in India. Though they were proud of what they'd accomplished so far, they somehow didn't feel satisfied. There was still so much of this beautiful country left to see and so many adventures to be had that they decided in that moment to turn Eleanor Rickby around facing north with a brand new finish line in mind, Lay in Ladakh in the Himalayas. Eleanor 
for Rickby's pace was relentless. But she took a quick stop in Bangalore to supercharge her carburetor so that she'd have the best chance of tackling the mountains in the Himalayas. Now turboed, Eleanor made her way to Hyderabad, which, in all fairness, should actually be called the City of Smiles. Because driving through in rush hour, Eleanor felt like she had new friends the entire way. Varanasi, a place like no other, a place that can't really be described. The sights, the sounds, and the smells are an experience. Where life meets death, and there are open cremations on the edge of the river Ganges to end the cycle of reincarnation. They say you only really experience the Ganges if you experience it at dawn.
As you already know by now, foolish ideas attract company, and the idea of driving a rickshaw into the Himalayan mountains is one of those ideas. Anarok and Cam joined up with Marin, Grace, and Eleanor and headed towards Shimla to begin their journey through the Himalayas. Cam got the usual lesson driving Eleanor in the Himalayas and then a couple motorbikes that they'd picked up so that they'd have room for everyone. Cam also got a lesson on how to ride a motorcycle in the Himalayas. And then just like that, the group headed off into the Himalayas. Eleanor Rickby now had a crew, ready to support each other with the mission ahead. And with a tiny little rickshaw carburetor going up against the elevation of the Himalayas, they were going to need all the help they could get. It was fairly uneventful driving into Dharmshala until the final bit where Marin absolutely blew the clutch plate trying to go up a very steep hill that was just a little bit too much for Eleanor. So while Eleanor got fixed, they decided to have some steamed momos with their Indian friend Pratik. Once again, it all started off as very smooth sailing with Marin and Cam alternating riding the motorbike and riding in Eleanor. Anarok flying along on his trusty Indian motorcycle that ultimately would be the only machine that had zero problems on the rest of the trip. It was going smooth until they reached a spot where both sides of the road decided to cross over and drive backwards, which caused a absolute hot mess. So Eleanor and the gang decided to take a detour that they found and go up and over the old top. Eleanor Rickby climbed up and over the top and emerged into Kashmir, an absolutely gorgeous region of India. Eleanor Rickby entered a region that's everything you think of when you picture the Himalayas. Big steep ravines, jingle rock trucks going by, and suddenly in this landscape, if at all possible, Eleanor looked even smaller.
now, Eleanor really began her climb. Her little, tiny rickshaw carburetor began to struggle more and more as the air became less and less oxygenated. Phillips became more frequent as she seemed to burn more and more fuel for every kilometer driven, and getting out of second gear into third gear was starting to become a luxury. But she continued her climb, whether it be first gear or second gear, she was doing what many said was impossible. She was slowly making her climb into the Himalayas, slowly but surely towards the largest obstacle of the entire trip, the famed Zojilla Pass. as well. Today, things began to escalate. Eleanor began struggling to get out of first gear or even move at all. More and more adjustments were required to try to get every last bit of power out of Eleanor's engine, which was becoming more and more starved for oxygen. Eleanor's reliance on the team started to increase as more and more times she required a push just to get up the most basic of hills. As they slowly made their way towards the 4,000 meter summit, Eleanor went where very few rickshaws have ever been before. slowly crept her way further and further up the Zojilla Pass through road that had been washed out by glaciers This was definitely not a place that a little rickshaw belonged yet here Eleanor was, and finally she emerged victorious at the top of Zojilla Pass. Just like that, Eleanor crossed to the other side of Zojilla Pass. There were still many more obstacles ahead. In fact, there was even another pass about the same elevation, but Zojilla Pass was well known as the most difficult, roughest road pass that Eleanor would face on her journey to Lay. So the team's morale was at an all-time high, truly believing that they could get over any obstacle to get Eleanor to the finish line. Cam finally caught up. The team hadn't noticed at the top of Zojilla that he was a little behind because he put his helmet on his motorbike and accidentally knocked it about 300 meters down into a glacier and took about 45 minutes to collect it. But the team was now all back together and making their way convoying to bring Eleanor to the finish line.
even though it may not have been very fast. Eleanor made her final approach towards Lei. To say that the scenery was insane would be an understatement. Eleanor Rickby had arrived at the finish line. She had driven thousands of kilometers all the way around India, seeing some of the most diverse landscapes in the world. From farmland and temples, to the desert of Rajasthan, to the coast, the jungles and hills of the south, where life meets death in Varanasi, and then back to the north in the Himalayas. Eleanor had seen it all in a country that's much more like a continent. 
and she had done what many thought was impossible, driven all the way through the Himalayas and made it to Leh. She'd met so many incredible people along this journey, and she made the best friends, Marin, Grace, Jazz, Anarok, and Cam. And just like that, Eleanor Rickby was gone. No one knows for sure what happened to Eleanor Rickby. Some say she was seen crossing a bridge in Bihar. Others say she was spotted in a crowd in Darjeeling. And some people say she was sent to a farm for safekeeping near Mumbai with an Indian man named Pratik. But no matter the whereabouts of Eleanor Rickby, one thing is for certain. Her spirit lives on in anyone who gets a crazy idea, a foolish idea, that can't be done, shouldn't be done, but does it anyways. <laughs>